Today, I'm gonna to show you how to do advanced editing in Lightroom Classic. Hey there, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flurn.com where we make learning fun. And in today's video, we're doing some advanced editing in Lightroom. Now, this is a part of our intro to Lightroom Classic series. So if you haven't already done so, be sure to start at the beginning of the series and work your way here. And we're gonna to link to all those down below. So in our last video, we learned how to do basic editing in Lightroom, which is fantastic if you want to edit an entire image as a whole. But what happens when you want to edit just certain parts of your image? Well, that introduces advanced editing. Things like our graduated filter, our radio filter, the brush tool. We're even going to show you how to remove spots and how to crop in today's episode. We're going to use these techniques to enhance the sky and draw more attention to our subject. We got a great tutorial for you. Let's jump into Lightroom. So we're back here in Lightroom with our sample images. Now, if you haven't already done so, you can download these on flurn.com. Just follow the link right down below. So we're going to start off with our image here, Intro to Lightroom 10. This is a fantastic example of a time when we want to do some advanced editing because the sky in this photo does look really nice, but I want to add more depth. I want to add more color to the sky and maybe make it a little bit darker. And I want to draw a little bit more attention to my subject at the same time. So that's when our local editing tools come in. So to get to them, we want to go to our develop module. So let's click on develop right up here at the very top. For now, we're not going to look at our before and after. Let's just click on our single image view. And we're going to be working with these tools right up here on the very top. So let's go ahead and start off with our crop tool. You can hit R for your crop tool as well. Now the crop tool in Lightroom is fantastic because you can crop your image however you'd like and it's completely reversible. If I hit enter, there we go. You can see I can go back in time very easily with my history, or I can just click on my crop tool again and look at this. I'll be able to get everything back to the original. Now you can also click right here where you see your aspect ratio. I can click right there and let's try a one to one, which will be a square. So if you wanna get your image cropped before you upload to Instagram, go ahead and choose your crop. Here in Lightroom, you can do that really, really easily. Pop, and there you have a square crop. Now, also within your crop tool, you have an option to change your angle if you'd like. There we go, drag this to the left and the right. Or you can click right here and actually draw a straight line across your horizon to make sure that your horizon is completely straight. Boop, and as I let go, you can see it straightens out my horizon. Let's go ahead and hit enter and apply that transformation. Our next tool in our advanced editing workflow is the spot removal tool. Basically, anytime you have a blemish in your photograph, maybe you have some dust on your sensor or there's just an object you'd like to get rid of, this is the perfect tool. So let's go ahead and zoom in. I'm gonna go to a one-to-one -one zoom here and we're just gonna kind of clean up the sand here a little bit. Here's my spot removal tool. Now with this tool, I have a couple of options. Clone, which is just gonna create an exact copy or heal, which is gonna try to blend things together. Now, generally you wanna start with heal and if you run into an area, especially around edges and things just don't look right, then you want a mixed clone. So start off with heal. And if it doesn't work as well as you need, then go to clone. So let's go ahead and click on heal. Now, basically you just paint over the area that, you, that you'd like gone. Okay. And then you have this other sample point that you can actually sample from. There we go. And we can go ahead and brush that in. All right. Something like that actually looks pretty good. So, Let's do this a couple more times. So let's say I want this to be gone. You can use your open and closed brackets to make your brush larger and smaller. I'm going to paint over that area and it's going to choose a sample point. And you can see I can sample from anywhere in my photo and it's going to try to blend the texture from wherever you sample and the color from your original point. Okay. So in most cases, it's just going to choose an automatic area and it usually does a pretty good job, but you do have the option to move it. So as I move this around, here we go. We can see I'm able to create new points each time. Fantastic. There we go. We'll just kind of paint over there. And I'm not looking to completely remove all this stuff from the sand. This is, you know, my goal isn't to get the sand to be like completely smooth, but I do want to simplify it a decent bit. Alrighty, that's looking pretty good there. And if we really wanted to go in here and spend some time, you could even do things like completely remove those tire tracks. All right. There we go. Now let's go ahead over to clone uh, because we can see we've removed some tracks right here and it does look pretty good, but let's go to clone and I want to do a little bit more. So we're just going to paint right over here. There we go and go right up there. 
because this time it's cloning. It's not gonna try to blend anything together at all. It's just gonna do an exact copy. So let's, for instance, go right over here over these tracks. There we go. Notice I'm not trying to do like the whole picture at one time. All right, even that was a little bit too much. So let's just hit undo a couple times. Let's just do these tracks. There we go. And then we'll sample right there. Because the whole deal with this is you need to be able to sample an area. And if you don't have a large enough area to sample with, then your effect really isn't gonna seem complete. There we go, let's put that over there. Fantastic. So if you've used the clone stamp tool in Photoshop before, this is basically the same thing, but we have the ability in Lightroom. See here, try to pull the sky and you can just tell it to come down here and say, hey, don't pull that sky over there. Fantastic. So we can see as I continue to do this, we can actually remove things like these tire tracks. All right, looking really, really good. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue removing these tire tracks. We're just gonna speed this up because it's kind of the same process. So I'll see you in just a second. Good deal. Alrighty, we finished up removing some of our spots. Let's go ahead and see our image. So here we can see all of these little points that we made, it's quite a bit. And here you can see all of our spot removal. So as I go back in time, we can literally just go back and add these if we want back. Okay, let's go all the way to our most current and take a look at our before and after. So we're just gonna click off of our tool here and click to see our before and after. Let's just zoom out a little bit. You can see how much we've done to clean up the spots here in Lightroom. All right, let's go ahead and back to our single image now. So we've gone over our crop tool, we've gone over our spot heel. Next is red eye, which I find these days is not super common, but if you do have any red eye in your image, just click and drag right over the eye and it'll take care of it. So now we're moving on to my personal favorite tools, the graduated filter, the radio filter, and the adjustment brush. Now each of these tools allows you to select an area of your photo and then make changes to that area. So let's show you how to do it. We're gonna go ahead and start off with our graduated filter, clicking here, and I'm gonna click and drag from the right to the left, and you're gonna see that my image is getting darker. The reason is, is I have my exposure slider turned down. So let's go ahead and bring our exposure slider way down, and you can see as I move my graduated filter, it starts to affect different areas of my photo. Now I can go ahead and rotate this around if I'd like, so I could have this you know, come from the bottom if I wanted. Let's go ahead and click right there in the middle, and maybe darken up the bottom of my photo. Or I can click this all the way up to the top and rotate it around. There we go. And now the top of my photo is gonna be darker and it's gonna slowly fade away. So this is our linear filter. And as you can see, it's really fantastic for editing things like skies. We're gonna come back to this in just a second. Let's go ahead and hit the delete key. We're gonna move on to our radial filter. So with a radial filter, basically the same deal. You just choose a round area that you'd like to edit. You have the option to invert. So in, you can see in this case, it's just making this area within my radial filter darker. I can click in the filter and move it around. I have these control points that I can make wider or taller. I can click out here and rotate this around if I'd like to. Okay, and of course I can move this around and invert this at any time. I can also increase or decrease feathering. Something like this is not gonna look very realistic. Generally, I wanna bring my feathering all the way to 100. This way, it's gonna be a really nice and subtle effect. And within this tool, I have all of these different options available. I can adjust exposure, highlights, shadow, texture, saturation, sharpness, noise, things like that. I can even add a color in there if I wanted it to be slightly green, I could do that too. All right, let's go ahead and hit Click right here on our tool, and I'm gonna hit delete on my keyboard to get rid of it. And last, we're gonna go to our adjustment brush. Now, here, just like in Photoshop, you can use your open and close brackets to make your brush larger and smaller. You can change your feathering. Basically, it's just gonna make the edges a little bit softer. And you can change your flow, which is gonna be a little bit more subtle. So if you want a subtle effect, bring your flow lower. If you want a harsher effect, bring your flow higher. So in this case, you can see, I can literally just paint in the areas that I wanna maybe make darker or lighter. So I'm just painting in the sky right now. There we go. 
and I can continue to make adjustments here. For instance, maybe I wanna make my exposure a little lower and bring my color temperature a little bit cooler. So literally I'm just painting these changes into the sky, fantastic. And because I'm doing it in a relatively random way, it's gonna look actually pretty good and realistic. Fantastic. So let's go ahead and click here to select it. You can see I can actually move my entire selection around if I need to, and I can click on the delete key and completely get rid of it at any time. So as you can see, all three of those tools are about selecting the area that you wanna change and then using those sliders to apply those changes. So let's go ahead and use these tools to make our sky a little bit more blue and darker, and I wanna draw more attention to our subject. So for our sky, we're gonna start off with our linear gradient. Graduated filter, it's, they change the name in every program. All right, so we're gonna start here with our graduated filter. Let's go ahead and click here, and we're gonna click and drag from the top down. There we go, and we can see it's starting to make my sky a little bit darker because I've got my exposure slider turned down a little bit. Okay, let's go ahead and bring this back to zero. We're gonna start off with bringing our color temperature a little bit cooler, which is gonna add some blue into the sky. Maybe we'll add a tiny bit of green as well. Let's bring our saturation up, and then we're gonna bring our exposure down just a little bit. Fantastic. Now, this looks really good, but I have one problem. It also affects the tree, and we don't really wanna do that. We wanna make sure the tree continues to look how it did before. We can actually use a tool to just affect a certain color range or a certain light range, and that's gonna help us basically mask out that tree. So to mask out this tree, we're gonna turn this range mask on. Right now you can see right at the bottom, it says range mask off. We're gonna click here and you can see you can actually use color or luminance. Okay, we're gonna choose color because basically I just wanna say, hey, only affect these blues. So here we have our little eyedropper. Basically you can click on the color you'd like to change. And when I did that, you can see this effect became invisible over top the tree because basically I'm telling it just to be visible in the blue areas of my image. So let's go back a couple steps here. There we go. And here's, you can see the before where the tree is made a little bit darker. And here's the after. The sky still looks good, but the tree looks like it did before. Super cool. Now you can actually click on this tool and click and drag to increase your color range if you'd like to. There we go. And now that it's just affecting that blue color range, I can go even farther and you, look at that. It's completely ignoring that tree. Now you don't wanna go too far. It's not gonna look realistic, but you also have the ability to adjust your range mask here. There we go. And build in a little bit of feathering to make it look a little bit more realistic. Fantastic, that looks pretty good. Now, obviously we went a bit too far with that exposure change, but I do wanna show you, check this out. It's just ignoring this tree, which is super, super helpful. All right, and something like that looks really nice. Fantastic. So let's go ahead and just turn this off and take a look here, uh, basically before we did our graduated filter. So let's go right back here. So here's our before the graduated filter and after you can see we've made our sky darker and more blue while ignoring the tree, which is incredibly cool. So it's done with our sky. Now we wanna draw more attention to our subject. And I'm gonna do that by lightening up our subject a little bit as well as adding some sharpening. So for this, we're gonna grab our brush tool. So let's go ahead and click on our brush tool. We're gonna increase our feathering and decrease our flow. Let's make our brush nice and small. There we go. And we're gonna simply paint right over top of our subject. Fantastic. Now, here we're gonna bring our exposure up a little bit because a brighter area in your photo, you'll tend to look at it a little bit more than you will a darker area. So your subject, you wanna brighten up a tiny bit and that's gonna help that add a little bit of a focal point. We're also gonna increase our shadow value a little bit. There we go. We're gonna add a little bit of texture, a little bit of clarity, and a little bit of sharpness. Now, basically everywhere I paint with this adjustment brush, we're gonna get those effects. And I wanna be relatively generous here. I don't wanna paint just over top of my subject because if I do, it's really not going to look realistic. That looks fantastic. So let's go ahead. This is before and then this is after. You can see our brush stroke basically just painting right over top of my subject. Now it's gonna help bring a little bit more attention to our subject. So this is looking great. Let's take a look at our before and after. So let's go ahead and turn our tool off. There we go. And we're gonna take a look at our before and the after. So here you can see the before. Not only do we have a lot of distractions here on the ground, 
We don't have much detail in the sky and our subject is kind of dark, meaning she's not as much of a focal point. I'm kind of looking at this stuff here on the ground before looking at the subject. Here in the after, we've removed a lot of the distractions, added more information, some blue and some depth into the sky and brighten up our subject, leading to a much better focal point. And that's all there is to advanced editing in Lightroom. Now, if you guys are enjoying this series and you're loving Lightroom, just like I do, you're gonna love Lightroom presets. They're incredibly cool. Basically, you can take all types of different adjustments and then save them into a preset where you can just click once and it can automatically apply it to an image or a series of images. And we're actually giving away a free sample 10 pack. Just click on your screen right now or follow the link right down below to download them. And if you want access to our full library of Lightroom presets, they're all included in Flurn Pro. Thank you so much for watching this series. I'll see you in our next episode on how to batch edit multiple images in Lightroom. I'll learn you later. Bye everyone.